Okay. Him driving her yeah. away. Yeah. All right. Mark. Uh, hey, guys. Hey. Mm -hmm. Hey, I just want to say I love this show. I listen to you every night. Thank you. All right. Okay, well, either way, I just got out of a counseling center, like, a couple weeks ago. And well, anyway, in a hospital? No, um, counseling center, like, um, attitude adjustment place. You, you got out of one? Yeah. That, that's, but it wasn't a hospital? No. Drew, you need, uh, you should swing by the old attitude adjustment place and get a little tune-up. Just, uh, kind of try? puts a, uh, Phillips screwdriver in your ass and just turns it like half a turn counterclockwise <laughs> just to, just to trim out your attitude a little bit. What, what are the, what's the sense on the... Yeah, I'm not clear either. Is this something that the legal system, uh, runs? When you say get out, did you escape, or... I know, I mean, like, I got, like, released. I just want to do that. Is this something you were into because you were in some legal trouble? No, like, um, my, my mom sent me there because, like, she said I was acting up a lot. Okay. Like, but, it, but it's not a hospital. No, it's not a hospital. It's like, you know... Okay. Is it like one of these outward bound things or something? I'm not really. It's like um, one of those four month things where like you go to school. I mean, it's pretty cool. I mean, you go to school there, you have your own room and everything. Okay. All right. Well, that's that's some, some sort of structure. Me. Mom used to threaten uh, those kids. Were, right. Were, I mean, well, that was sort that of was boarding, boarding school, school yeah. wasn't it? No, your it, was mom? A, it was a home. No, we kind of couldn't afford building school. It was a home. I don't think it ever existed, but when you're seven, it sounds real. Right. I know it sucks here, but I'm going to send you away somewhere else where it sucks more. It's basically uh, the I'm threat. I'm starting to think Ian is the uh, British version of Adam Carolla. What's that? In terms of his upbringing and things and the depravity that he went through and threats from his parents. Were your parents poor, Ian? Yes. Uh, not really. It's like... Not what? you, Mark. We're talking to <laughs> <laughs> rock star. No, dude, it's so this guy. My dad was a compulsive gambler. Oh, he was? I had a great childhood. And my dad's still my all-time hero. Even though we spent all our money on horses. Why is he our all-time hero? We spent all his money at, uh, on Who's horses. Who's the dude? Who's the dude? You respect and him? He, yeah, he gave me a sense of humor. Gave me a, a great football team to support, and he loved me. Um, he had a little problem there, yeah. Did he ever t uh, take care of it? Mm, not the... You replaced it with alcohol, usually? No, he wasn't a big drinker. He threw up one time on three pints of bitter or something. But I don't even know why I liked the horses, but... It didn't bother. Is he still gamble on? Huh? He's dead. Oh, he is? Yeah, he died uh, the day before the last of the first phase of the Bunny Man shows. But I loved him. And what did he die from? Cancer. Okay. And, and uh, mom's still available? I mean, she no, was... she died last year. Oh, my oh, boy. From cancer. Uh, did I say my dad died of cancer? Yeah. yeah. Oh, so that's, that's silly. Um, but he was great, and we were always skinned. I always got the fashionable clothes three years late. Right. But it didn't matter, you know. Did he ever win gambling, or was he always broke? Uh, I think he generally, if he ever did win, he'd go and blow it on uh, some totally impossible, uh, what was he called? When you, A long shot, or a yeah, oh, when trifecta when you bet or on something? 96 horses. <laughs> you go there, and you basically, uh, <coughs> you, you, you bet on 14 races, and you take a long shot on all 14 races. Accumulator, we call it, yeah. And you, you bet a couple of uh, a couple of bucks, but if you win, uh, you, you get to actually take all the horses home. And, yeah, uh, but a lot of what he did provides me and my brother and sister with great memories of funny, funny episodes in our life where, you know, my dad telling the, the TV man to bug it off. Like. Well, you got a, I, I, I'll tell you, I don't, I don't mean any disrespect for your departed father, but you got a good sense of humor about it. A lot yeah. of guys would be pissed off if he their dad to... took the TV and gambled. If my dad did anything, if my dad used the TV to get a, a treatment for an <laughs> ailing uh, sibling of mine, I would have killed him. I, I, are you sure the chaos of all that didn't be well, I, disturbing I never thought it did on some of wife told me that I'm one of the most sudden, you can't say, you can't say effed up. You can yeah. say after screwed up, up um, people that's ever lived, you know. But I, who is I just me? You are. So my wife reckons, and she's probably right. But I took it as normal. You, know? you, you, uh, you have and a I lot. I laughed of... about it. You know? <laughs> Ian's got. Laugh. The laughing can be a form of denial. Ian's got some. <laughs> no, some... it's a form of having a great laugh. Ian's got some great distinctions in life. He's part of the greatest uh, live rock and roll band currently out there, and he's one of the most effed up people that's ever lived. But that's only two people's opinion. Mine right. on the, in the first case, and my wife's in the second. You know, a lot of people. Well, listen, right. hey, uh, God bless you. I had a tough childhood myself, and uh, I came out of it with a sense of humor. And uh, I've, uh, you know, patched things up with the parents over the years, and uh, thankfully they're still alive. And I got on with my life. 
I didn't yeah. uh, decide to uh, sort of go into a tailspin, feel sorry for myself, and exactly. make I a career out of pouting. And on jealousy, I mean, I think I used to be like that when I was younger. And I, I think I was just, I don't have to sell this. I'm going to make them jealous. Drew, where? He's off. <laughs> Drew just picks up and leaves. All right, see you, Drew. Uh, hey, Drew, <coughs> we'll be doing the rest. Are you, are you going to do the rest of the show, or are you going to come back and we're not a planet? All right. Uh, no, I do think you have to turn it around sometimes, and you're always going to be... Life's mad anyway, you know? That is true. Mark? Yeah. All right, so, um, wait a minute. Who the hell were we talking to last? Didn't you just go to boarding school? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. I just got jumping me. Uh, and you're back from you're back and you've been readjusted. Yeah. Okay. But while I was there, um, me and my friends were we were in one of my rooms and we were playing truth or dare. And one of my friends, Casey, she dared me to kiss my roommate Dan, and he's gay. And so I I did it. So it was you know it was a dare. Mm -hmm. I think he thought I was gay. And then later that night, I woke up and like I realized that he was like touching me and like giving me oral. Mm -hmm. That whole thing. Right. Can't either. I pretend like I was asleep because I was like all shocked. I didn't know what to think or anything or what to say. Uh, okay. You're gay. Uh, Drew, please. <laughs> Drew's not even in the room. He knows what's going on. You pretended to be asleep while you're being satisfied orally by your roommate. Yeah, I guess. Uh huh. And how long did you pretend to be asleep for? I was only like for five minutes. Well, that I know. When five I minutes is a lot of oral. I haven't gotten five minutes of oral sex in the last <laughs> year. What are you talking about? It's an eternity when someone's mouth is on your penis. <laughs> it's like holding your breath for five minutes. <laughs> Mark, that's a that's a lot of time to pretend like you're asleep. Did, did you enjoy it? I mean, well, the fact that it was a guy was kind of uncomforting, but besides that, I guess. Right. Uh, so are you now questioning your sexuality? No, uh, well, what's going on is this Saturday, one of my other, my friend Casey, she's having a party over at her house. And me and Dan are both invited, and I'm going to feel real uncomfortable. But I never said anything about this, and I think he kind of noticed that I was thinking that I was asleep because he would, like, stop and stare at me every right. once in a while. Because you'd grabbed a handful of his hair and were, um, were, were yelling, don't stop. This is a scoop for, uh, for your show. I remember some fella, I was about 15, going on three. Um, and I went to some concert in Liverpool, some crap concert I didn't want to go to. And I didn't have a ticket, it was sold out. I just stood outside the door because I was into music and I thought it was a band's in town. It was Pink Floyd, actually. But oh, really? Don't you, tell anyone. You went, all right, no, uh, tell anyone. And this fella, he was like about 18, he said, uh, he was telling somebody, he said, I know how to get in through the side door. I said, oh, yeah, I'll go for that. So we booted the side door in and got chucked out after about 10 minutes. And he said to me at one point, oh, he took me to this pub. I was only 15 and I got a pint in and... And I felt something on my bum, you know, I think it was his hand. Right. And I thought, I've got to get out of here, I'm not, you know, I'm not into that. And, right. You know, whoever it is, it's fine, but... Then he, he waltzed me off, I'm saying, I've got to get out of here, I want to go home. Get me to the bus stop, and then he hits me with, do you mind if I, we go around the corner and we'll give you a gobble? <laughs> I thought... I, hold on, I love that. All right, let me just explain, because there's been a lot of uh, we Liverpoolian need, lingo. We need Joyce again here you to translate. Gobble, I'm going to translate. Hold on, let me just translate for a second. Here. He was uh, 15 going on three. He was oh, a young 15-year-old. He was uh, going to check out, um, uh, we'll say, the uh, I don't know, um, uh, who was it, Pink Floyd? Oh, Pink Goldman. Floyd, but not interested, just yeah. going to check it out. He had a pint in him. <laughs> Which means yeah, that's a lot of semen, I gotta tell you. A pint of, a pint of bitters. A pint, he had a pint of uh, bitters in him, meaning he was 15, he had a beer, and he went in, he couldn't get into the concert, but uh, a guy who was a little bit older, who probably had a couple pints in him too, said he could get into <laughs> the side, side, uh, get into the side uh, door. They got booted out, so he grabbed Ian's uh, buns at 15 and wanted to know if they wanted to go across the street for some fish and chips. He said a gobble, didn't he? Yeah. Uh, that means uh, oral sex, right? Yeah. He was going to, you know, That's give me a... Write that down, over. by the way, Drew. A gobble. A gobble. A once over. Right. Did you do it? I just said, sod off, you know. But I was frightened. He was 18. He was bigger than you. And a, an obvious rampant southern gobbler. Right. So I legged it to the bus stop. So I got on the bus home, and I was like, I've got to get home, tell me, brother. I'm something freaked out. Cheeky, so, you know, I thought it freaked me out for about a, a day, and I thought, so they never go and try and see Pink Floyd ever again. <laughs>
right. I, I think the lesson here, it's not about uh, being out at 15. It's not about being drunk at underage. It's, it's not about trying to break into clubs with older drunk guys. It's about the band Pink Floyd. Yeah, this is the exactly. constant here. All right. Yeah, it's about Southern making decisions. That, yeah, All right, so if a guy with a few pints in him wants to go have a gobble. Uh, what the, was I doing out there? Oh, the answer is no. Well, at least you didn't do anything you didn't want to do. If it hadn't been a girl, it might have been different. Right. You would have went for a, uh, uh, a swabble. I'd have still freaked and gone for a double <laughs> All right, we'll be back. Uh, all right, I'm going into break here. We'll be back uh, after this. Yes, you is. And we have Ian McCulloch tonight from Echo and the Bunnymen. The latest CD is called Evergreen. And the song we're about to hear is called Nothing Lasts Forever. Mm -hmm. 